But the question is if the coalition strategy for that country is likely to bring stability to the region and indeed the markets anytime soon. Security and defense expert Shashank Joshi is here to answer that question. He's an associate fellow of the Royal United Services Institute in London. Thank you so much for coming in. Good to talk to you. So what is the ultimate objective here? Well, you said coalition strategy. Let me clarify. There are as many strategies as there are coalition members at this point. And we're seeing various gulfs open up here, not just between the Arab League, which offered its support and then pulled that back a little bit yesterday, but also uh, America, this time, for the first time in 10 years, keen to take the back seat, and its European allies keen to take uh, the front seat, driving this forwards fast. And that's mm -hmm. going to be the more dangerous chasm that's opening up today, where we have war aims differing. So Britain and France want to push Gaddafi from power quickly and uh, see a strategic danger in him, him hanging on, whereas America has really been burned by its experience in Iraq and is concerned about the uh, potentially mm. dangerous effects of rapid regime change. Okay, so there isn't a united front when it comes to strategy, as you say. Not but, at all. But from what you're saying, it's not a question of, of if Gaddafi goes, it's when. Uh, well, I, I think the pressure will mount, but even if regime change was the explicit strategy, how would it actually occur? There are only two ways. Number one, the rebels consolidate themselves and march all the way west to Tripoli. Uh, that is militarily impossible at this point. They just don't have the strength for that. The second option is the regime crumbles from within. But we've seen again and again mm. how resilient dictators, defiant, willing to hang on with oil, can sustain themselves for years after they have been utterly isolated. Right, so what are you saying, that we'll see a situation Libya is the new Iraq? Uh, the, of the 90s, not of the 2000s, uh, hopefully. But what we'll see is uh, a prolonged struggle in which the coalition will struggle to keep its members uh, as one. And you may end up seeing Britain and France leading this uh, pretty much by themselves with only notional support from the Arab states. If Gaddafi, if and when Gaddafi does go, who are we then dealing with? Uh, we have little idea. The rebels are a broad-based movement. Uh, there's no reason to think there is a, there are extreme Islamists powerful amongst the rebels. But let's remember, Iraq was a stable, uh, functioning state that descended into chaos. Mm. Libya, on the other hand, has had its institutions hollowed out for 40 years. So if Gaddafi leaves, there are no obvious vehicles to perpetuate a sound administration in Libya. And we could see a prolonged partition of the state or a sort of de facto division between East and West. So let me ask you, what does that mean for oil production? <laughs> Uh, well, long term, uh, it means uh, a very sort of uh, bad prognosis. We've already seen this ironically strengthened petro states in the Gulf. Uh, but in the, in the short term, we're going to see disruptions to production. Uh, and we may see oil refineries changing hands back and forth if the fighting progresses. What about the risk of attacks on oil installations, oil facilities? This well, is very bit, high. Yeah. We've seen some already. We've seen uh, Colonel Gaddafi bomb his own oil installations, perhaps to stop them falling into rebel hands. And as this progresses, uh, cruise missiles are in inaccurate. Airstrikes are inaccurate. The civilian infrastructure, but also the economic infrastructure of Libya, is going to take a hit. And what does that mean, medium to long-term impact on the country, the region, and indeed foreign oil companies, particularly Italian companies that are involved in Libya? Well, Italy's been very cagey. It has a, a lot at stake over here. But now it's gone too far. And if Colonel Gaddafi hangs on, he's already promised uh, the oil contracts are going to uh, India, Russia, and Brazil, and China. He said this out loud. He may not be in a position to honor that if the rebels control yeah. the oil fields, uh, but the future doesn't look good for, uh, for Italy or others. Now, Cheshank, I want to ask you a difficult question, ask you to look into your crystal ball. It is such an unpredictable situation, but much of what we're seeing in the markets right now, uh, the volatility in the mm. price of oil comes from this sense of uncertainty of that this conflict could now be prolonged, yes. particularly with foreign military mm -hmm. intervention. So let me ask you, how long could this stretch out for? Uh, I would say months, not weeks. It's going to be a Kosovo-style campaign, uh, probably not an Iraq-style debacle, but it's not going to be over in days, as the Americans hope. Shashank Joshi, great to get uh, your thoughts. Thank you very much indeed for your analysis. Cool.